Hi guys, welcome back to the Hugh Jeffries video and in this video I'm going to be doing a screen replacement on a Samsung Galaxy J7 Prime. Although things didn't quite go to plan as you'll find out soon enough. I am repairing this phone for a family member who purchased the replacement screen but decided not to attempt the repair and rather have me do it. The device appears to only have damage in the bottom left corner with a few cracks. This damage doesn't seem to affect the phone in any way. You can see that I'm able to power on the device and navigate through everything just fine. And you can see here in the settings, the model number, and you can confirm that it is a J7 Prime. On the back, it doesn't have too many marks or scratches. To be honest, I'm not really keen on the design of this phone. I don't think it looks very nice on the back. However, this isn't my device, so it's time to power it off and do some repairs. The first thing I'm going to do is take the screen off and unfortunately it's glued down similar to say an iPad or an iPod or something like that. So I'll need to use a heat gun or heat source of some kind. I'm actually using a solder rework station for this, but I'll use a metal pry tool just to get underneath the glass and lift it up a little bit. Then I can come along with some plastic picks just to uh, help remove the adhesive and separate the display from the frame. You don't want to use a metal tool for all of this as it can cause damage to the frame of the phone. So to avoid that, uh, the plastic tools are much softer and less likely to damage any of the frame or phone. This part by far took the longest out of all the steps in repairing this phone because they use a ridiculous amount of adhesive which makes this repair very difficult and you are very likely to break something as you're going to find out very soon. Once I was inside the phone I could remove this little plastic clip and disconnect the LCD. You'll notice that I couldn't disconnect the battery first which kind of has me a little worried but um, that's impossible to do um, when removing the display from this phone. Once I have the screen assembly removed from the device, I can use a plastic spudger to remove any adhesive or glass left on the frame of the phone. So when I apply the new adhesive and stick down the display, everything will sit flush and is likely to be adhered correctly. Now the only issue I sort of have with this installation is the adhesive that was provided with the display assembly itself. Now the person who wanted me to repair this basically gave me these parts and said, look, just put this on the phone. So that's exactly what I'm doing. And you can see this adhesive is by far not what the original one was when we removed the display. The adhesive provided is simply just a few strips of 3M double-sided adhesive. You can also see that it's not cut to size for the phone, so I had to try my best to make it stretch as far as possible and try and cover all the surfaces that should have adhesive on them. Of course, if you're doing your own repair, I highly recommend getting the right parts and equipment so you know everything can go together nice and easily. But like I said, this it wasn't my phone and I was provided with these parts to simply install on the phone. With the adhesive installed as best as it could be, it's time to remove the protective layer on top of it and then I can attempt to install the display back onto the J7 Prime. So of course this is by far one of the only repairs I've ever done without disconnecting the battery because it's physically impossible on this phone. With everything connected I held the power button and voila it worked right? So I could swipe to unlock and everything seemed to be working just fine. I navigated into settings and then went to exit the app and found out that well, the home button stopped working. And of course, I couldn't finish up the repair with a non-working back button or home button. Turns out I broke the flex cable when I was removing the display. So I ordered in the new part, which was about $10, and this was one of the only parts I could find for this phone in my country. So parts of these aren't very common, and that's obviously a downside of rocking a non-flagship smartphone. With the part arrived, it's time to take apart this Samsung even more uh, in depth so we can replace the home button and back button flex cable. So to actually get inside of this J7 Prime, I'll need to remove all of the screws from the mid frame of the phone. And then the back panel is actually clipped on to the phone. Now this was ridiculously tight and I had basically broken a few picks trying to get this off. But eventually I was able to unclip the back of the phone itself with a little bit of force and I was able to see the insides of this J7 Prime. With the back removed I thought this was a good opportunity to disconnect the battery before I did any work. 
However, running into another issue, it just wouldn't come out. There was no sort of disconnect flex cable like you'd see in many phones these days. It was just sort of two little pins. So you had to remove the battery to disconnect it. However, the adhesive was so strong that I opted just to leave it connected while I changed the home button um, for this phone. The headphone jack is also on the same cable, but you can see removing it, it basically snapped right off. Now I didn't actually tear the cable, I believe I just sort of twisted it and the thin little traces in it somehow got damaged and therefore the back and home button didn't function anymore. Either way, it is a fixable mistake, so nevertheless we can repair this issue. Funnily enough, the fingerprint reader actually still works on this phone even with a broken home button as it's actually a separate cable which I found quite interesting. With everything installed I can reattach this little antenna and clip on the back panel onto this J7 Prime midframe. With that finally fixed I can reinstall all of the Phillips screws that connect into the midframe for some reason there's a lot of these. And then after that, I think it's time to give this phone one last test to make sure I haven't damaged this phone any further. With everything cleaned up inside, I connected the replacement display onto the J7 Prime and connected up the little plastic bracket that goes on top. Pressing and holding the power button, I got nothing. Luckily, a restart by holding the power and volume down button showed the Galaxy J7 Prime logo, so we know I didn't completely fry the phone. With it booted up, you can see the home button is once again functioning just like it was before I did the repair, as well as that back button. It's time to stick down the display by pressing it into place. With the screen correctly installed, I can install once again the two SIM card trays into the phone. We can remove the plastic film protecting the display and start scraping away at the Samsung logo which was covered up with some kind of hard paste. With that scraped away, this completes the J7 Prime repair. So this is it, a simple repair turned into something a little bit more difficult thanks to a phone that's not really designed to be repaired. The display was glued down which made entry to the phone very difficult and made it very likely to damage something like that home button and back button cable. The battery is also very hard to replace given strong adhesive, as well as the charging port is soldered to the board. To complicate repairs further, the back of the phone is also held together with loads of plastic clips. So, simply put, this phone was not designed to be repaired. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.